So I want to talk about investing in your hot rod hobby, but before we do that, I want to give you guys a rundown on everything that's going on around the shop. So the first is the charger. I've been picking away at this a little bit at a time, and I have my quarter in a skim coat now, and it is right. It took me a while to get it like this, and I actually, I cheated, I cheated, because this section right here was so bad that what I had to do is I dinged it in and I welded a piece of sheet metal across like this. But I've got a perfectly straight seam here now. I've got the bulge over the wheel. It, it, it was hard matching this side to the other side. But like I said, I've got a skin coat on it now. I've got a, uh, obviously I've got to take this piece of trim off of here. There's a couple of screws I have to drill out. That's why it's on there right now. So once I get that out, I can sand all of this and get it finished. But I mean, look at that, right? Yeah, I'm proud of that. It's one of my finest bodywork accomplishments so far. Bad Chad, watch out. I'm coming for you, man. All right, so over here. We're doing our Your First Engine Job series, and today I was going to do this. But day before yesterday, I had, uh, well, let's, let's call it a rain-induced sudden gravity storm on my motorcycle, one of my motorcycles. So I... I did a over the handlebar thing and I'm a little bit banged up so I really don't feel like doing this right now but tomorrow or the next day we'll pop the head off of this and continue that series what else is going on? oh over here um, the last video we did we were talking about the camshaft so I mentioned about the rings and that whole incident that happened with Finnegan's garage and all and I realized wait we've got a whole video to do on thermal barriers and thermal dynamics inside of combustion chambers and I will do that video as soon as I have my hands on a piston with clean defined heat marks and then I can describe exactly what goes on and how these things get hurt so it may be a little while before I find one but my eyes are open I'm looking I'm scrounging I'll get one all right uh some a two people in the comments asked about what these things were these shims and what these are, these are pinion angle adjusting shims. These are three degree, I believe they are. So what happened was when I, when I first set up Bottle Rocket, when I put the eight and three quarter rear in it, I set the purchase and I was very aggressive with the pinion angle. I, it's, it's like seven degrees down. I don't know why I did that, but I did it. So what happens now is that in high gear, I start to get a vibration. So what I have to do is I have to take some of that angle out. So We'll be unbolting the rear end. These go between the, the, the spring and the spring perch. And this is how you angle it up and down. It's just a, a chassis tuning thing. So I'm going to try these, take a test pass with it, and we're good to go. So that's that. Um, oh, okay. Um, also, I started working on the Buell. Ironically, ironically enough, the morning that I, I crashed, the bike the other day I started gathering all the parts to start putting this back together again so this is coming within the next month or so I'm going to dig into this heavy I'm going to do some, I, there's some ideas I have that I want to do with the engine but I don't want to talk about that yet so blah 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 all right so that brings us to the topic of today's video and it's hot rod economics investing in your hobby so here's here's the situation I'm new to nitrous, right? And I have found that I love nitrous. So I've also found that it's extremely addictive and those bottles go empty fast. So I killed my first bottle almost immediately. And even now I, I, I bought a spare bottle and I've already put a dent in it screwing around with the car out front over here. So I saw that I need, I need volume, I, I need capacity. So I'm going to buy another couple of bottles. And I realized, wait, they have the bigger bottles. So yesterday, or you see, yesterday, yeah, yesterday, I'm going through a marketplace, and I see an ad, and it's got a picture of this. This is a 15-pound bottle. All the other ones I have are 10s. And these things go for $350 new, empty and new, without a gauge. So Facebook Marketplace ad shows this bottle and random nitrous parts for 200 bucks. I'm like, so, guy who lives 50 miles away, his name is Tony, great guy, he does motorcycles, shout out to him, I don't know his last name, doesn't matter, great guy, uh, and thank you for the good deal. 
So I says, sold. So I run up to his place and I, I buy the bottle and I'm like, I won 200 bucks for this bottle, good to go. And then you have all of this bonus stuff. So now you say to yourself, why would you buy stuff that you don't need? Well, first off, it's not that I don't need it. It's that it was a bonus that came with that. And if you do your hunting, that's what you're going to find. You're going to find somebody who's selling a part, and then there'll be random scraps around it that they'll throw in because they have no, of no use to them anymore. He doesn't have the nitrous bottle anymore. So all of this stuff is like, what am I going to do with it? So for 200 bucks, I got my bottle, which paid for everything, and then I got this stuff. And this is how you want to go about investing in your future. Now, I, this, I don't have a plan for any of this, any of these things that are on here right now. But this amounts to a complete plate system minus the solenoids. It is everything else here. Here's a plate. Now, I know that this stuff is archaic. This is all at least 20, 25 years old. I know it's not top of the line, top quality stuff. But it was free. And it goes on the shelf. When you break down the value of each of these items, there's a small fortune here, especially when you take into consideration the fact that you're, you're in the middle of doing something you, and suddenly you need a fitting or you need a length of line or you need a switch or you need whatever it happens to be. You have to stop what you're doing and go purchase it. And you're going to purchase it generally at retail. You're going to pay a lot of money for it. And sometimes you're going to pay shipping for it too. But when you buy bulk like this, even if you don't need it, you're increasing the, the amount of things you have on your shelf, which increases your productivity. It, it makes life easier. This is how you build cars efficiently. So in this pile here, now mind you, this stuff, as far as I'm concerned, is free because my 200 bucks bought that bottle. So this is all free. And what did I get here? All right, so like I said, there's a complete unused plate system. Here's the bottle brackets. Here's the plate itself. Here's an assortment of jets. Here's another assortment of jets that came with it. And I know that these are the ones that go with this setup. And uh, this is a nitrous outlet. They're, they're, they're a different diameter, although you can use these jets in here by, by drilling open the fittings. But that's besides the point. There's a set of jets. There's a set of jets. Number four lines. What are the value of these things? When you need a fitting, you're plumbing your fuel system and you need a fitting, let's say for a return line, right? Or, or just out of your pump. What is the value of those individual items when you need them? Not only in, in terms of cost, but in terms of time. You know, because by having an assortment of these things on the shelf and enough of an assortment, it allows you to breeze through a job. Okay, I'm going to put this together. I'm going to put this together. I need a, I need a length of number four line. Oh, here you go. Here's the number four line. Speaking of number four line, here's a complete front to rear. You know, so if, if I want to hook up a nitrous system in a car, well, here's a whole line dedicated to it. Um, here's a, a filter, a nitrous filter. I mean, I, I don't think I would use it, but somebody I know might. So it goes on the shelf. And if not, it's got a couple of fittings also that can be used. Here's, here's another one. This is a, this is a, uh, a two-stage controller. So let's say I want to stack plates or I want to run a fogger type with a plate. Well, here's a switch for it. And here's the instructions and the wiring schematic for it. These things go for about 150 bucks or so new does it work i don't know let's say I hook it up and it doesn't work ah it's garbage but it was free so put it on the shelf right and if it doesn't work well then in that case you go out and you buy a new one but here's another example of like just good stuff here's, a, here's an inline pressure switch okay with its fittings like i said all of this stuff just comes with the package and it all goes on the shelf because you never know when you need something like this where you could put it to use. Here's a neat fitting so that if you want to swap the bottle and you don't have any tools on hand, here's a, a finger fitting to, to swap the lines. I don't know, here's a relay. Here's this, uh, here's this switch panel. Now, 
I don't think I'll ever use anything quite as fancy as that, you know, the, the bottle opener and all those things. But maybe I come across somebody who could use that. It's a great barter item, or I could sell it 20, 25 bucks, whatever something like that would go for. But perfect example. This is how you build cars economically. And this is investing in your future in building cars. You know, most people only think about, well, I'm building this one car and I need these parts for it. And then they don't think down the road, okay, six months from now, am I still gonna wanna screw around with cars? Three years from now, am I gonna pick up a different type of project? Five years from now, am I gonna change direction on the one that I already did and I, I wanna add something or take it away or whatever it happens to be. By continually accumulating piles like this and organizing them, you become more efficient and you can build cars cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. There's no magic to any of this. Think of it as investing. It's an investment. For my $200 purchase, I got all of this freebie stuff and you know what? A couple of car base gaskets, which when, when you need one, you know what I'm saying? When you need one, you gotta stop what you're doing, you gotta run to the store, you gotta pay through the nose for a stupid little piece of paper just so that you can get your car back on the road. You do it like this, you got them on the shelf and you're good to go. This is how I've always done this stuff and this is how I'm able to do as much as I can with as little as I spend. So that's that. So while I'm there and I'm talking to Tony and I says, I'm, I'm just about ready to leave and I say, so do you, because he's got, he's got a, he's got a, he's got a really beautiful flip nose 55 Chevy and uh, he's got some really sweet motorcycles and as I'm ready to leave, I, says, I just says, you know, off the top of my head, I says, do you have any Chrysler stuff by any chance? He says, well, I only got one thing. I says, what's that? He says, I got a, I got a, a 46 center section from my 55 Chevy, so I'm going to put a Chrysler rear in it. I'm like, uh -huh. he, what do you want for it? So he says, let me show you. So he pulls out a bucket and it's all disassembled and it's this beautiful Richmond gear. It's a Richmond 486, right, with, with the bolts. These are reverse thread bolts. They're hard to come by. So there's a full set of those with a pinion, with the bearings already on it. It's got a crush collar, so I've got to get a crush collar eliminator. And I could do a whole, in fact, we are, we're going to do a whole video on crush collars and, and why you don't want to have a crush collar in a high performance car. And uh, a nice 10 spline yoke. I says, he says, what do you want, you know, I says, what do you want for it? He says, I don't know, make me an offer. I says, will you take 100 bucks? He says, sure. I says, bingo. Because now for me, yeah, I know, what is a used ring and pinion worth? Most people wouldn't buy it at all. And if you're doing like a street car, like something you drive every day, and you know it's gonna go on the highway, don't ever buy used gears like this because they, they'll make noise. Unless you could set it up exactly, exactly, exactly the way they were in the previous application, they're gonna make noise, they're gonna hum and stuff like that. But for a race application, you know, where it's something you don't care if it makes noise, well, these things are perfect. So the reason I, I jumped at this is because I can't find these ratios available when I was setting up the rear end in uh, Bottle Rocket and then later on Slaghammer, the best I could find was a 456. A couple of places had, had these listed but they weren't available. So I ended up having to put 456s in the car. I really wanted this. I wanted the 486 or even a 513. So I score, as far as I'm concerned, this is gold. You know, this is great. And this gear set here is going to go into Slaghammer before it goes out again. So guys scrounge you know and i tell you man it's like it's one of the f it's one of the most fun parts of the whole hobby i know yeah, drive the car all that stuff that's great but along the way there are so many different like little little uh uh dopamine hits you know hunting and scrounging and finding stuff like that yeah, it's a big part of the hobby you know don't be afraid to pursue it because in the long run this will save you tens of thousands of dollars and make your life just so much easier as you're trying to build cars or, or help your friends or and and you, a lot of the stuff is barterable and sellable you know so don't be afraid to jump in and go for it all right so i gotta sort all of this stuff put it all away and then uh tomorrow we'll get back uh, no tomorrow i have something completely different and i'll see you then i'll see you tomorrow